Schools are an essential service that form part of the very core fabric of society. So as the students returned after six weeks of online learning, there was both trepidation and excitement in the air. Trepidation in terms of health and government advice, requiring four square metres per person whilst inside, and 1.5 metres social distancing, both simply not possible for any school in the country. And excitement because schools are places of learning that facilitate critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, citizenship and character development. And for these to have the greatest impact, learning needs to take place together, building relationships and in a face-to-face -face context. Nothing can replace human contact and connection and happiness is found through genuine concern and support for others. It was great to be back. When I had to go to school, I had to get temperature checked by my teacher, which I found pretty cool because it was like sort of like a laser sort of thing. I miss my friends because I can't really talk to them. It's just boring being by myself. That conversation with them in person is so much better than just over a computer screen, really. At the minute I walked in and saw my friends, everyone wanted to high five, hug, everything, but um, I guess you can't do that right now. It was so exciting returning to school after lockdown. The kids were bustling in. They were so excited to see each other. There were no mobile phones. There were no laptops. The boys were engaging on the playground, catching up, just wanting to chat and to be able to have that friendship group that they miss so much when they are at home. It was really exciting for our staff too. You could see the engagement and excitement in them having their kids back in their class. So we wanted to go above best practice in terms of what we were doing to reassure our community that this was a safe place to come each day. Being back at school is really good because I get to see all my friends and it's easier to communicate with the teacher when I need help. It was actually really good to see my teacher not on the screen because it would just hurt my eyes all the time, but now it's great to see her in real life. On May 26th, just one week after returning to school, we received news that one of our students had tested positive for COVID-19. Parents have rushed to pick up their children when coronavirus shut down two schools today. Laura, students have just gone back to school, so what now? Waverley College had a student who tested positive for coronavirus. That was a boy in year seven, uh, forcing them to shut down their senior campus. Waverley College says it was very prepared, though, for the possibility of an outbreak. They had a plan in place and they say it worked well. The boys have been very resilient, the staff are being very proactive. Uh, we, we delivered online learning um, in a very rapid and quick pace and we, were, we, we had preparation in terms of what would we do in the event of this. So it wasn't panic, it was actually really safe. When we went into lockdown, it was period one. I was in maths and an announcement came over telling some boys in the year seven classes to go to the gym and for the teachers to check their emails. And then straight after that, we kind of all could tell that there'd been a confirmed case in the schools. It was just a bit worrying. Everyone was a bit frustrated inside the classrooms. As the New South Wales cases got lower and lower, you kind of didn't think it was going to happen. So I was a little bit surprised, but you know, there was always the chance of that happening. The school made it really easy. There was lots of announcements that came over. They were releasing us year by year. Kids that were within walking distance of the school were able to leave pretty much straight away and kids that needed picking up were released after that. The days after the case of COVID-19, we obviously had to shut the campus and engage in a deep clean. Nine staff and 35 students were deemed to be close contacts and had to isolate for 14 days. New South Wales Health conducted further testing and analysis on the student who tested positive and his close contacts. We were pleased to learn that he was in fact a false positive case in challenging circumstances, our community stepped up and responded incredibly well. The sense of urgency from this whole entire situation has really united the community to respond orderly and calmly and quickly. Being able to come together and stick together at times like this is what Waverley really did so well and I feel very proud to have been part of that. Lessons I learnt from the coronavirus is just to not take things for granted. Just the everyday things like seeing teachers, seeing friends, 
yeah, everything co-curricular as well. If you look back this time last year, you would have never thought that we were going to be in this type of situation. The teachers have made the best that they can do with all that home learning because it's been a struggle for all of us, but the teachers and the students have adapted really well, which just shows that we're all prepared for anything to happen at Waverley College. For me, COVID-19 highlights the significant role that teachers play in the lives of their students and vice versa. Fundamentally, teaching is a human relationships-based vocation. So the idea of automating our profession has been completely debunked by this experience. While online learning was, was great, it's actually far greater to be back in, in the classroom with the boys face to face. All the boys are so enthusiastic and so desperate to get back to Queen's Park and have that normal winter routine. Term 3 is also the final year for Year 12 before they start their HSC. So we want to make that a special end of their time here at Waverley College. Well, we're down here today playing Cranbrook at their home ground and uh, playing them across rugby, football, AFL, volleyball and tennis. Uh, it's a fantastic day down here as you can see. My advice is to get out there, have a great time, have fun, but also be grateful. Um, not everyone at the moment across Australia can be out playing sports, so they should be pretty thankful that we've got there. Seeing the boys get back into their co-curricular activities made me so happy. They were back engaged in those things that they really love to do, whether that is sustainability club or STEM group or debating or music or drama or dance. They were back involved and doing what they love to do with friends who are like-minded and feeling the same as them. Sport too was huge for our boys. We noticed a big difference in them when they were unable to participate in physical activity. So seeing them get back to their PE lessons and their sports training, they were just so much happier and so much more focused then in the classroom, which was great to see. Over the last eight months, there has been a slow unravelling of the systems that connect us to each other. Schools, hospitals, aged care facilities, places of worship, border access, and family support systems that we rely on. We have had to find new ways to live our lives and stay connected to each other. We need to recognise that it's normal in a situation of ongoing uncertainty, such as a pandemic, that we have ups and downs. We can feel depleted or exhausted and experience periods of burnout. To get us through these challenging times, we need to accept that life is different now. Find activities that fulfil us, embrace our faith, focus on maintaining and strengthening our relationships, build resilience in each other so that our community can get through this together. We pray for those countries that are struggling at this time and we hope a vaccine can be found and distributed across the world. We are grateful for what we have. I'm walking down that road Where did all the flowers go? They say we're supposed to grow Learning from the highs and lows All eyes lying on me Oh, begging me to play the role Cause I'm gonna get it right I'm 